Welcome to Insight, produced in partnership with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today we are chatting with David Lewis, president of the United Way of the Greater Lehigh Valley, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. And thank you, David, for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Mark. Thanks for having me. The United Way is uh, United Ways are spread all across the country. They are. But this place, Lehigh Valley, has a particular identity, has a particular history. Talk about the United Way here and how this place in Lehigh Valley affect your work and your interpretation of the United Way mission. Yeah, well, yeah, thank you for that opportunity. And, and it really is unique. I've worked for four different communities before coming here about eight years ago. So I think I have a, an interesting perspective now. Most of my um, work has been uh, here in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and on the East Coast. But I also do some work with United Way uh, in the US network. And um, it really is interesting. When I came here eight years ago, so many people said, you know, this is really a unique place. And I said, okay, you know, great. And um, everybody says that. And, and, you're, and, and, you're and, like, and ah. Exactly, exactly. I'm like, okay, let's just see how truly unique it is. But what we found is the giving and the engagement, um, the difference that people are making really is, is unlike other communities. I, I don't want to call out uh, any in particular. We just had an event last Thursday night. And um, we had several prospects um, for a donor engagement. And um, there were several that had come to Bethlehem recently from other parts of the country. And again, I'm not gonna call them out, but they said, we've not experienced this level of engagement, this level of giving, and this level of commitment in other places. So we're really blessed here and we know it's a special place. Part of what makes this, this place special, at least to me, is that you're, you're on a major transportation uh, hub, corridor. Right. Uh, right. You're very close to major metro areas. And this place has this unique community feeling, but it is not a generic community feeling. You have the county identity, you know, Lehigh, um, the, 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 these various counties in the neighborhood, but you also have the, the city, the town identity. And, and both of those identities are very strong. It's almost as if, um, you know, People um, are competitive with each other, uh, town to town. Yeah. Until it's about the Lehigh Valley, and then everybody sort of circles the wagons, and it's it, it's everybody pulls together. I think the competition can be used in a good way. I mean, every time you know something great happens in Allentown, Bethlehem says, "Hey, let's keep up," and then you know <laughs> something good happens in Easton. So you know, I think they're learning from each other and sharing experiences, and uh, a little competition even in the nonprofit world is is not a bad thing in terms of lifting us all. So, you know, we're definitely seeing that. But when it's time to come together, I mean, the Lehigh Valley is approximately 750,000 people, um, you know, so it's so it's just big enough, but it's not too big. Um, and it's remarkable how many connections there are. Um, you know, the leaders in the valley, many of them, most of them know each other, um, and uh, they're just a call away for us to, you know, get them involved. It used to be that that there were a few dominant large, large, large players uh, in the, in this area, and then all the other businesses became feeders into that ecosystem. And then with the with the change, which uh, 30, 40 years ago, where Bethlehem Steel went away and some of the other larger uh, businesses um, fled this area, uh, there was a really difficult time, and now that's being replaced by. Uh, a few tall trees, uh, healthcare is, is, is big here, uh, but also your economy has diversified. How has that affected the, um, the operations of United Way and how you interact with the community? Well, it's completely changed it. I mean, again, to your point, we were able to go into literally a handful of companies and raise the resources that we needed to raise. We've had to add staff, frankly. Um, you know, one thing I'll point out, it's not just companies, but it's really individuals. So, um, you know, years years ago, you know, in, in the time frame you're talking about seven, eight, ten years ago, we had less than 100 individuals who gave $10,000 or more. Today we have more than 250. So that's definitely a shift in model of, of how we do fundraising. Certainly the, the mid-size and smaller corporations are still there. Um, they're going strong, um, and that's how we get a lot of those individual donors. But we've completely changed our model to going in, you know, to one company um, to, to really needing to go out to 
to all the different um, folks in the community. And you've taken a community engagement approach as well. So instead of uh, having one conversation, you're trying to engage the employers, uh, the employees of a, 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 of, of, an, of a company to be part of that United Way giving philosophy. You know, a lot of people think of how it was 100 years ago when we started, and they think about the annual fall campaign. In fact, it wasn't uncommon just in my time at United Way. If you asked people what they knew, you know, about United Way, they think about the old thermometer in the center right. square. And that's what they associated with United Way. And, you know, we know it's, it's so much more than that. It's really year round for us. We talk about giving, volunteering, advocating, all of those things matter. Um, and, you know, when people can see the work firsthand through their volunteer efforts and advocates, you know, on a, um, on a particular um, issue, that makes all the difference in the world. So, yeah, we've really turned around to year round um, fundraising and year round impact which ultimately is, you know, what's driving people to get involved. Off camera, we talked about your three impact areas. Could you just describe those? Sure, you know, one of the things that we found is um, many United Ways years ago, we, we used to say we were a mile wide and an inch deep. You know, we'd raise money and every organization got a little, little bit of something. And, you know, to really have a lasting impact, to get to the root cause and, and really make systemic change in society, you need to go deeper. So we got really focused, uh, I think it's now six years ago, our board determined that we're gonna focus on three key areas. One being education and specifically having 50% um, more kids read at grade level uh, by third grade. 50% more, more. more kids read at grade level. Right, in, in third grade. And third grade is critical because what we know is up to third grade, you learn to read. After third grade, you read to learn. So kids that aren't reading on grade level by third grade, they're 13 times more likely not to finish school. So you're talking about education, you're talking about reading, you're talking about third grade level, and, we, and you're talking about a, a distinct metric. You're setting yourself up to be measured, to be judged. You're Correct. judging yourself and you're setting yourself up to be judged by your investors. That's right, that's exactly right. Um, we heard from them loud and clear. You know, it's one thing for folks to give a dollar a week or two or five or even $10 a week, um, you know, to help, you know, other, other folks, other needy people. But when you're going after major contributions, 25, 50, $100,000 contributions that we're often going after, they want a return on investment. So they want to see the data. They want to know how many more kids are being, who are reading in grade level. They want to know what's going on with, you know, um, trauma-informed care and summer learning and the, the various programs we have around education to support that work. So, yes, we've literally created, um, well, we have three-person data shop at this point. Um, you know, along with our partner PBS and Lehigh Valley Reads, so that we can measure those things because we know we have to get that in order to secure some large grants and also some large individual gifts. And your other two programs? Yes, the second one is really around food and security. Uh, people were shocked. In fact, of all the data that we ever throw out there, I think the one that shocked folks the most seven years ago is when we said nearly 80,000 people, um, which is you know, 10% of the people in the greater Lehigh Valley are food insecure. Right. So we wanted to decrease that number by 50%. Now, I, I should say, of course, we want to decrease it by 100% and have no individuals, but we actually thought if we change our model, if we do some things differently, um, it's a stretch goal, but even an attainable goal to do 50%. And, and what is the third uh, area of focus? Um, having seniors safe at home. So what we know uh, is there's about 80,000 um, seniors who, who are at home. Uh, we wanna make sure that they can do their activities of daily living, their, their IDAs and uh, activities, ADLs. ADLs and IDLs, they need to be able to do their activities of daily living. And um, you know, through, through our efforts uh, like gatekeepers, uh, where people who are checking in, it could be the meter reader you know, that's checking in. It, it could be the, the person at, the, at the, the bus station, transportation, where they get their ticket. It could be the receptionist you know, um, at a doctor's office, but they're, they're checking and they're asking, you know, are you safe at home? We do a lot of that through Meals on Wheels. Um, oftentimes that's the only contact that people have 
uh, during the course of a week um, if they're socially isolated at home. So of course it is about a nutritious meal. So we're getting to that food access goal, but it's also just about you know making sure that they have that social interaction and making sure that they're they're safe at home. So we've been able to actually to uh, decrease that number um, or increase the number of people that are safe at home by 50%. You've mentioned a couple of times this idea of trauma-informed instruction. Yeah. Um, and trauma-informed, it's, it's such an interesting topic. Unpack what, what you uh, define as this sort of trauma-informed idea of providing service. Well, first let me say that this is going to be at a very high level. We have subject matter experts on, on my team that, you know, know this work inside and out. In fact, we've done some regional and national trainings already. Um, the information came out of United, or, um, University of Pennsylvania from Penn, um, but we latched on to it pretty early. And, and what we know is it's this, maybe one way to describe it is just as a soldier could experience post-traumatic stress disorder, when a child is exposed to stress at home, to trauma, maybe one parent is incarcerated, maybe one parent has substance abuse, or they're just not around, they're working two jobs. Um, there could be abusive situations, there, there could, they, they could be moving homeless, there could be any number of things that are you know, creating trauma. So of course those kids then go to school and they act out. And it used to be, you know, the teacher go to the principal's office. You know, that was how that was handled years ago. So, you know, there's ways to instruct those children and there's a way to, to modify behavior that's not, you know, why are you acting up, but really what's going on at home um, that we can intervene with. So there's really some um, great instructional techniques um, that are coming out of this. Um, that we've been able to share with the school districts. David, it's been so great chatting with you. David Lewis, thank you so much for unpacking the work of the United Way of the Greater Lehigh Valley, and thank you so much for your insights. My pleasure. Thank you.